This is a lizard that actually carries venom, and in the past, I've actually been envenomated by it, and he's getting pretty big, so I'm gonna do the best I can do to get him out. I gotta be honest with you, it's a black throat monitor, and it's a feisty little monkey, and I do not wanna get bit, especially now that he's getting a little bit bigger. Come on, buddy, come on, come on, come on. I'm gonna get him down on the ground as quickly as I can before he bites me. And he's actually starting to mellow out a little bit. Look at this, guys. He's getting huge. Remember, when I got bit, he was like this big. Now, the fact is, is that monitor lizards actually all have some form of venom in them. But certain people, myself included, react differently to different species of monitors. For instance, this black throat monitor, I have a pretty nasty reaction where my throat closes up. I feel really sick, almost like flu-like. And it's not a very good situation. But I've talked about before how black throat monitors chill out as they get bigger. And already he's like three times the size of a baby and you can already see he's a little agitated but he's not trying to bite me like he used to before when we took him out he was oh there he goes uh oh I spoke too soon. So the fact is, is that he used to try to light me up every single time I handled. I used to have to take out gloves and stuff like that. Now he's starting to chill out a little bit more. This is a great sign. Ooh, look at that little monkey right there. And I'm telling you what, when he gets a hold of you, at least me, I have a terrible reaction. So I want to always make sure that I don't get bit by something like this because I don't want to feel bad for six or eight hours like I did last time. And that was when he was only this big. Now that he's a lot bigger, who knows what could potentially happen. But nevertheless, he is chilling out and looking absolutely amazing. Well, every time I say he's chilling out, he opens his mouth up like he wants to bite me, right? But the fact is, is that he's starting to become a little bit more docile and he's starting to becoming a little bit more handleable. But isn't it weird that some lizards actually carry a venom? How crazy is that? And like I said, trust me, I don't want to get bit by him again, but you can start to see it's okay, buddy. It's gonna be okay, bud. But he is an absolute cutie. I love it. And I know that when this, oh, he almost got me there. Woo Gotta be careful. Okay, it's okay, buddy. So I know when he gets bigger, he is gonna be a beautifully tame animal. And I tell you what, the best way to handle an animal like this is to never restrain him. Cause once you restrain him, that's when they're gonna wanna bite the worst. So see how I'm just like kind of almost making my hand a platform for him. That's the way you handle a lizard where he doesn't get too upset. Even though he's a little bit feisty right now, I think he's pretty cool. And by the way, guys, I don't know about you, but I would think that hand this guy definitely makes me a reptile army member, right? And if you wanna become part of the reptile army, you can go down in the description and click on reptilearmy.com. Get yourself some merch, become part of the army, and be a little soldier for us out there, spreading the love of these beautiful creatures, just like this guy here, Flapjack, that is a little monkey right here. We've got all kinds of merch available so go to reptilearmy.com and join the movement rj what are you doing buddy i see something that's pretty cool right over here and i'm just going to grab this right here and show you what i mean look at this this is so awesome oh whew. Look at that. Now, I always talk about the fact that uh, alligators will lose teeth, up to 2,000 in their lifetime. But this is a little tooth that RJ actually shed. You can see it's a little hollow. They just drop out and then a new one grows in, basically. It's kind of like us with kids' teeth, right? But they do it all the time, right? Throughout their whole life. So that is an absolutely amazing tooth. Uh, do I see uh, reptileteeth.com coming in your future? Yeah, I think so. Hey, RJ, you want a rat? Come on, bud. Whoa, there you go, buddy. Whew. Gotta watch that hand. This magic moment. You know, the last couple times I've went through ball pythons, I've basically said, ah, it's a mundane thing, and I've done the time lapse through them. And then a bunch of you guys have commented, like, it's not mundane, we wanna know what you're doing. Really, this is kind of the time of the year where it's when the art and the science really mix into one, right? And basically what I mean by that is that the science is follicular growth. The science is how much they eat. All this kind of data that I compiled over all these years. But the art is kind of looking at the animal and deciding what to do next. Take, for instance, the spied female. She was 15 millimeters last week. I'm gonna go ahead and ultrasound her if she hasn't grown at all there's a chance she might be going backwards that's where just the art of kind of knowing what to do really takes place so you kind of don't have to waste your resources of breeding an animal that's not going to produce anyway so let's go ahead and ultrasound her and get an idea where she's at and just as I suspected, she actually went backwards. So we went from 15 down to 13 millimeters. And you could just tell, you know, again, the feel, that art, right? Or the feel of the way she looks, the way she's laying in her cage, the way she's feeding, the way she, everything is going on. I just figured this girl was probably not gonna produce this year. So now I'm not gonna waste a male on breeding her because there's no sense. She's not gonna produce. We're gonna just have to shelf her and wait till next year. 
this one's a really interesting one. This is actually a beautiful animal, a Silver Streak Bongo Mojave. I mean, my goodness, what an animal. Bred to actually a banana GHI. That would be a great combo. But you can tell she's not a big girl at all. I bred her hoping she was going to feed and really fill out. Well, she turned out going up to 19 millimeters, which is a lot, which basically once they hit 20, 22, it's almost a lot for them to breed. But the fact is, a lot of times when females are this size, I'll see them go to 20 and then go backwards or what we call phantoming out, right? So let's ultrasound her and see what's going on. But this is very, very interesting, and I'm not really sure what's gonna happen here, guys, because she's actually at 36 millimeters. So she went from 19 to 36. That's just pre-ovulation. But I really didn't think this girl was gonna go. I still have my doubts. I'm not gonna lie to you here, but if she ovulates in the next week or so, which is what would happen with a girl that's at 36 millimeters, then we may actually get that clutch, and that's gonna be an absolute banger. All right, guys, I'm Brian, and this is Barcheck, and we're about to start the day. What are you guys doing? We're working. Working. Hey, what, do you, two of you guys need to, but, to hold the bucket? It's so heavy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> got a clean butterscotch you shed out. And we're open later today, so... <laughs> Get the snake out. Towards the front. Can you talk, can you talk, talk to me about how to do this? Just did. You got to grab her towards the front. Yeah. We do it every other weekend. No. Oh. No, I'm not scared. I'm trying to get the snake out. It's too early for this. Don't go water fish. Come on. Where's the snake at, Mike? I got her. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> got her. Okay, we're good. Fine. Ba 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 da 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 would you put her in? <laughs> Jay, what are you doing? I'm riding on this bull and you can just play around with the tail. This is actually a pastel leopard clown ball python. That's absolutely cool. Now both this and my pastel lesser leopard clown ball python, both are females that typically produce like super late in the year. So this girl was seven millimeters. She just went to 13 millimeters. Let's see if she's grown some more. And unfortunately she hasn't grown, so I'm gonna to continue to breed her because last year she laid in October. So we still have a ways to go, but you can see she's chunky, she looks great. She's been breeding, just hasn't gone. Let's hit that lesser leopard clown right now. And like I said, this was the last clutch, the last two years in a row. So she didn't produce until October of both years. So I don't know what's gonna happen. She was at 14 millimeters about a week and a half ago. Hopefully she'll be at 16 or 17 millimeters because this girl is a girl I definitely wanna see produce. And really, she's still at 14 millimeters, but again, last year, I remember, it was about June or so that she went from 14, 15 millimeters and popped up to 25 and 30 millimeters. So again, both those female clowns look really good, but again, this is what I'm talking about. The art and the science coming together, right? I'm scientifically looking for follicles, but I'm also artistically looking at the animal, deciding whether to put resources into breeding. With the spide, I decided it's done for their not worth it. With these girls, I'm gonna to continue to breed until I feel like it's not worth it. it. Might be another two or three months. Hopefully, they'll pop, and the whole point is to spend the most time you can with your animals. The more time you spend with your animals, the more you're gonna get a feel for what's going on. So you can use the science behind things, but also get the feel for what to do to be as successful as you can. Today I need to go through this dark frog cage here and thin it out a little bit. It's a little bit crazy overgrown. I really like the way it looks, but I'm gonna go through, pull out the dead leaves and stuff up there. Probably pull out one of these plants up front so you can actually see the dart frogs. But yeah, let's get started. There's always a really fine line when it comes to a reptile zoo like the Reptarium, where we want these enclosures to look naturalistic and planted and absolutely beautiful. But at the same time, we don't want them so planted that when our patrons come in to actually see the animals, they can't find them. So right now, Jessica's obviously just trimming things down so that the frogs actually are able to be seen. And you don't see just just beautiful cage with a bunch of plants and you're not even sure where it is. It's almost like that scene from Jurassic Park where it's like, where's the T-Rex? Well, we want to make sure that we're really riding that line between beautiful enclosures and also being able to see the animals. Guys, you gotta check this out. Come here, check it out. And this is a good example of why you should be checking your animals every single day, because this is a pinstripe female. And look at that. Woo -hoo! Looks like some eggies. Looks like a nice clutch too. The fact is I didn't expect her to lay for two more weeks. So she's two weeks early. Probably I mismarked it to be honest with you. But if I don't go through every animal every day, I might have missed that. So what do you say? We uh, first off, let's hit just this one little. And now let's set up an egg box. 
right, let's just go ahead and take this girl down and we'll actually get her off her eggs. And I'll tell you what, she was bred to a banger male. And it's this boy right here, which is a pewter bee lesser bongo. That's a lot of cool stuff. That is a pastel, it's a cinnamon, it's a spider, it's a lesser, and it's a bongo. And then we're breeding into a pinstripe. That is a lot of genes. Let's see how many eggs she has. And I tell you what, for a little girl, she's not that big. Look at the clutch size right there. This is what I always say. I love this size of eggs, right? They're kind of like maybe 70% the size of a big egg, right? You know, but the babies are going to hatch out just fine and do well. But look at this girl. She's maybe 16, 1700 grams. And look at all of the these eggs that she laid. Oh, doggy. That is a good clutch right there. Just try to get this off the paper really quick without her biting me. Put them over here. We'll slide this girl back in. As always, we'll get her cleaned up, get her all washed up. Now, interestingly enough, I look at this clutch. I don't know what's going on with this egg right here. This is a really bizarre egg because it looks like an egg, but it feels kind of loose and it's kind of deflated a little bit. Not really sure what's going to happen, if that's going to go term or not. I'm not sure. It looks good, but I don't think I've ever seen an egg that's kind of folded like that. That is definitely weird. Nevertheless, we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven eggs. I mean, eleven eggs from a 1600 gram female. That is ridiculous. And again, think of the combos that we could have with this. I cannot wait for 57 days from now. This is going to be an amazing clutch to cut. Oh, you're going to help nope. her with anything. So. Nope. Let's start from the top. No, you don't. See? Don't touch her, Mike. She doesn't you're like grabbed you. Her. Yeah, I did not grab her. I picked her up, and then you pissed her off. Get, we this, got it. get this shit off of her nose. See? As soon as you touch her, she does not. I like didn't it. even touch her yet. She's seen you coming. I'll get this. Place. I'll put you in this time. <laughs> yeah. Don't get her away. And now Jay's all wet. But that's fine. I'm getting all of this stuff shut off. I think she's good now. I think that my shirt definitely uh is soaking wet. Yep, but I got the rest. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, here is a playlist of me handling a bunch of big animals on this side right over here. Please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.